starts with, and I'm saying something provocative, of not raising capital. People will only give you capital when they sense that you don't need the capital. And they run away if they think you need capital. So it's all about, you know, building a solid track record on the small scale and master your discipline. Welcome back to the I'm sitting down with Richard Olsen. We'll talk about his background with Oenda, High Frequency Trading, and a lot more. So, Richard, welcome to the podcast. Good to have you here. Great to be part of your podcast. It's a great honor. Great fun. I want to be on for a long time, so we have a lot to talk about here. But tell me first a bit more about kind of what you're doing these days in terms of trading and everything around that too. So I'm one of the, you know, kind of enthusiasts believing that blockchain, stable coins, et cetera, will kind of ultimately change financial markets dramatically and give everyone in the retail a kind of a completely new opportunity. So I've been building a company called Luke, which has basically two arms. One is a B2B relationship where we help institutions to build technology. At the same time, we have an exchange, crypto exchange, which boasts zero fees. So really to make trading easier for the man who doesn't want to have all the complexity. And third is we have launched a weather-inspired crypto forecasting service. That sounds very cool. I definitely want to hear more about this later. So tell me a bit more about kind of how did you get involved in, with trading in the first place? I believe what was what I've seen back, back in the days, but what was it like to start that way? I mean, at first way back in my career, I, you know, I, I was always fascinated of turning banking into true financial engineering discipline, and then at the same time, make that tools available to everyone. So the first project was under the ne- name of Olsen Associates building a real-time forecasting service using big data. That then branched out into two things. On the one hand, offering academics millions and millions of tick quotes to do market microstructure research and really understand the details of markets. And secondly, then launch Oanda, which you know kind of became instrumental to change FX market for the retail. It's interesting how when that was my first broker I traded with ever in terms of Forex, so it's kind of kind of good to me too that way. Uh, but but also there's definitely a lot there. So you want to ask more about how it was to kind of start with high frequency trading back in the days where no one was doing that specifically. I mean, it's like today when you go out for a new project, everyone says you're crazy, you're nuts. Why do you do that? You know, why do you ever try to do that? So uh, you know. Uh, and really, if I tell the full story, you think really we're nuts. We started off when still scraping prices from a Reuters data feed, a video thing, scraping it off and then re- reading into the database. I mean, it's really, you know, Stone Age. But today, and what few people realize, we're still in Stone Age. I mean, in the next two, three years, dramatic changes will happen. And this is what. I find so exciting. So, what do you think the the high frequency trading is heading? Because it's been, of course, a lot more popular these these recent years. People kind of seem to get more into it. I think everyone wants to do it in into kind of ways. Do you think there's a future for it? Do you think that people will kind of um, it will be like too crowded of a space to trade high frequency, or how does that how will that turn out? So, so first of all, high frequency has a strange word. You know, kind of on the one hand, you have the XDX markets, the top hedge funds, which arbitrage different marketplaces. Obviously, this is not the place to be as a for retail crowd. But what there is is to have the next generation of technical tools go away from traditional technical analysis, but embrace the new technology. And this is where our optimal service is so exciting. Does that involve AI in any kind of ways where you could kind of predict some move or some patterns with AI? Of course. And it uses, and this is what is, it uses, uh, first, it's true artificial intelligence in the sense of kind of mimicking what an analyst does when he does analyze markets, but it's data driven. It has very genius ways of how to process the data and for any let you know kind of people to get in it's all back tested with a lot of scientific work which has been published 
What do you think is going for the the average trader? Because a lot of people kind of seem they think that AI or especially high focus trading needs like a lot of data. You need a lot of like work, a lot of coding. Could the average trader kind of participate in that, and could, could they kind of benefit from it, or is it only reserved for the people who can code and like develop systems and things? I mean, first of all, I find I mean the real coding internal. It's like building Intel chips. My goodness, this is super difficult. But what will happen, and this is what's so interesting, is there will be prefabricated inputs, and the trader of the future will use these feet prefabricated inputs and build his detailed strategy using these building blocks. So this is what we're focusing on. So what I find interesting with Wanda specifically, and I'm sure it's the same thing with Likey, although I've not have a look at it in detail, but is the fact you can provide traders with tools that they can use to kind of spot the patterns better or, or like spot different things better in the market. And back then, especially when you launched it, and even now, not many, traders, not many brokers offer that. It's kind of like a new thing still. That you can help traders to kind of find or trade better with these kind of tools in the back end. I mean, in my view, I mean, as a supplier, you have a responsibility that your customer earns money. And actually, this is the best customer retention tool. So, like, for example, what we notice is we have a daily newsletter, which we publish as part of the kind of news report. And, you know, kind of literally we see people open that ledger every day. And it's just one measure of the fact that they find it essential. I mean, otherwise you just, you know, take it in for two weeks, three weeks, and then drop it. I don't want to say a lot of brokers, but many brokers have like this reputation of like taking advantage of the, the trader. Like they have like bad conditions trading, they have this and that, they maybe chase orders and stuff. How do you think when that differentiates from that? And I know it's probably very different, but in terms of image, how do you think that they differentiate from this kind of typical sort of bad broker? I mean, I mean, I'm... I'm pretty cynical. I mean, think of early days when you went to the doctor. He f would first extract as much blood as possible, then, you know, tell you, you know, now I'll stop and then, you know, make you pay a lot because you're so grateful that you're alive again. So in a sense, I find in, in the financial industry, the supplier has to really take it very seriously his responsibilities to do everything to help and make life easier for the customer and user. What do you think Forex is headed now that there's crypto in the game? Because a lot of people, not, a lot of people want to get into cryptos and don't really care about Forex anymore. For foreign exchanges for them, something old, like not in, not in the trend anymore. So do you think that, the, that both things can like coincide Forex and crypto? Do you think most traders will go to more cryptos or, or stay in Forex mostly? I mean, first of all, if you look at what the growth area is in cryptos, it's the stable coins. And stable coins is currency. So actually, you'll have a merging of the two. And this is why it's so exciting. So you see most brokers would offer both, or would you say that stable coins could be more, a bit more stable in terms of coins? I mean, first of all, you know, kind of, this is just, I mean, the, the, the reason why kind of you have all this movement to blockchain tokenization is because you can get rid of this highly complex centralized system, which no one has been talking about, about its deficiencies. I mean, everyone has, is talking about the deficiency of crypto. No one ever in the public debate is talking about the deficiencies of the existing financial system, like daily settlement, interest rate payments, which can only be made overnight. I mean, it's a really arcane system, which has to be replaced. And there is this evolving kind of new market space, which combines FX with cryptos in an efficient way. And this is there where I think a lot of money can be made. What do you think that means for traders? Does, does that mean that cryptos will be more like Forex? Does that mean that maybe uh, things will mostly stay the same in the market? Yes. It, I mean, it will become indistinguishable. And uh, obviously, I mean, the problem is on the crypto side, if you start a business, I mean, the like, stumbling blocks, which you have regulatory, other things, it's, it's horrendous how difficult it is to build up. But as you know, kind of like at a little tip, hmm? We're getting to a very interesting stage now where, uh, you know, we can offer, start to offer really nice product. You mentioned about these weather-like reports for crypto traders that they can see like how the market's doing and you know, how different coins are doing. You want to tell us more about how, kind of how this works and how it benefits a trader? So, I mean, we all know that about trading, it's all about timing. 
And we all know that when you kind of have technical indicators, I mean, you know, if you go through them, how they're computed, they're based on moving averages, oscillators of different types. And the problem is that how can you really make sure that you zoom in on those events which are truly important? And then when, and, and, and the other thing is that markets go through phases, like there is huge volatility and then suddenly the markets become very quiet and, or the reverse markets have been very quiet and suddenly become very volatile. And their key for the trader is to stay and have the right pulse of the market. Like music, you need the right pulse. If music goes slow, you want to go slow. And how to do that. And the essence of, of the algorithm which goes into our, our kind of computations is what we call intrinsic time, event time. So it starts with what is time and, and how we can pace time. And it uses the actual directional changes of markets to pace time and set the pulse of how you trade. That sounds interesting. Sounds like something that benefit traders a lot. Is it only for crypto or is it, is it also available for Forex? So today we've just kind of uh, primed the tool for crypto. This is where we start, but we will uh, expand it uh, in the coming uh, kind of releases to, to FX. I know one of the big aspects that kind of hurts traders a lot is the, especially in crypto, like the fees were really high at some point. I know you offer like a, a no fee platform now, which is a big game changer. In Forex, the spread, the commissions can add up to a lot over time. So how, how do you make sure that traders are able to kind of stay on the game with, with these lower commissions and lower spreads? I mean, first of all, you've just, I think it's just important for any trader to first understand how important fees are. And that's something which is completely forgotten because you see the huge volatility of markets and you see, ah, oh, I could earn 1%. And then relative to 1%, a fee of 0.1% uh, seems small. It's just one tenth. But we forget that the 1% profit is hypothetical and the 0.1% is a certain fee which you pay. So it's like choosing your right doctor. You have to decide which stop do you want to go to? And he is your partner. Can these fee be removed or can they be lowered down? Because of course, brokers need to make money also, and that's kind of how they make money, no? Yes, but but so actually, so the fee is just part of the equation. The other part of the equation is the spread. And you have to include the cost of both. And it's there that I'm trying to position look in such a way that we have the most competitive offering if you include the total cost and have it seamless. And let's get rid of this complex. Oh, if I put in a limit order, you know, I get it. I pay lower fees, but if I have market order, then I have a much higher fee, you know, kind of it's, you know, kind of uh, like traveling. You don't like to, you know, have always you, either your car, but you don't want to have your bicycle next you know, bring it with you to drive the last kilometer or something. We just try to get there. I'm sure you've met a lot of traders over the years, either fourth traders or crypto traders. And some people might be struggling, some people might be getting better results, but what would we tell them to kind of focus on to get better results in trading? I mean, I think most important is to have a realistic profit objective. I mean, the big problem is people are just unrealistic in terms of the returns which they want to generate. And if you once kind of relax on that and say, okay, I want to have a small return or, uh, or a kind of a reasonable return, and then have a clear risk management framework. How do you, what is your core strategy? These are the most important. It's such a good advice to tell people this a lot because in the broker game, it's more regulated, but there's a lot of people who are kind of promising big returns and like big objectives and big targets and things. And when you look at it, most traders cannot just do that ever. They're not able to achieve that. So being able to keep it back down to something more acceptable, more realistic, is definitely a big key there. Yes, and 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 all, you know, kind of if you manage to earn 15% over a period of time, and then you have increased your capital by 15%, and then the next time period you earn 15%, you know, it adds up over time. But it's like in sports. 
you cannot go to the top championships on day one. You started in the, in the lowest league and then work yourself up. I'm sure you know that a lot of traders have issues with getting capital for the trading. Do you have any thoughts on how they can manage to get more capital over time? I mean, obviously, um, kind of, I think it's, uh, do you mean capital in capital raising or capital, capital raising? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it starts with, and I'm saying something provocative of not raising capital. People will only give you capital when they sense that you don't need the capital and they run away if they think you need capital. So it's all about, you know, building a solid track record on the small scale and master your discipline. And then the capital will come. It's, it's, everyone has connections. That's a good point. Yeah. It was a good point, which is people who try to force too much getting capital is definitely harder to get. Yeah. Is there anything else we didn't talk about or we didn't touch on you would like to mention or you want to discuss a little bit? No, so, um, you know, kind of on our side, you know, kind of any support, help, which people want, eager also to find out what they want, so uh, eager to get feedback. And a third is, you know, just uh, with Wicca, we're really on a trajectory to kind of expand the service. And uh, I think the Outmore tool is super interesting. Uh, currently, we don't, our exchange is not available in the US. So uh, if users want to use Optimal as a signal service, please tell us. So that will give us an extra push to make, to, uh, to get that out earlier and faster. That'd be cool. Uh, I'm sure getting to the US is a big regulatory issue where you have to get all these, all these regulations and if they do a lot of paperwork. Yes. Sounds, <laughs> that sounds good. So where can people go down to find more about what you do, see the platforms you're working on and kind of just learn more about you? So just go to liquid.com and, you know, start to browse and, you know, like everything, there is a rapid rate of new releases coming on enhancements, but you know, that's part of normal work. What's the main difference between, I know when they offer some cryptos on their, their, their MT4 or MT5 platform, what's the difference between trading this versus trading on, on Likey? Is it like a big difference or is it pretty similar? Uh, I mean, first of all, we're today just a crypto exchange, but uh, just to give you a backstory is I tried to convince Oanda to reinvent its business model in 2012 and embrace blockchain and, you know, take it to the next level. And given the fact that we had so, so much money in the bank, I wanted to, you know, kind of really just reinvent it with this new environment, but I didn't get the buy-in of the others. So I started this from scratch again and look, it will be, you know, on the 2.0. Perfect. So we'll leave the link below for people to check it out. Likey, I believe it's likey.com where they can find out more about what you do and try the platform. And if they have any questions, they can reach out to you directly. And yeah, we'll, we'll be in touch and discuss more things in the future. I'm curious to see how this evolves and, and where it gets within the future. Very good. Thanks for the time. All the best.